Nickelodeon Universe is a surprisingly fun theme park with some diverse ride selections, including everything from thrill coasters to kiddie rides. It's moderately priced and perhaps best of all you can opt to ride just a handful of rides instead of getting the all-day wristband. In this video, you're going to learn what the best ticketing option is for you, and we're going to explore some of the more unique rides that I found surprisingly fun and that I highly recommend you do. First though, let's go ahead and celebrate. We hit 1,000 subscribers at the end of June, a whole month earlier than my original goal. So I want to sincerely thank you for helping me to build this channel up to something I'm really proud of. I literally couldn't have done it without you. That being said, it seems my traffic is coming from all over the place because less than 2% of my viewers are subscribed. So if you could go ahead and hit that subscribe button, I would really appreciate it. That way you'll be getting the most up-to-date advice on how to maximize your time, money, and efforts in theme parks across the world. All right, now get ready because it's time for theme park travel tips. Before we dive into the ticket prices, let's first look at the top thrill rides you're going to want to ride. That way, when we discuss the pricing, you'll have a better idea of if you want to aim for just two or three rides or the all-day wristband. First up is their flagship roller coaster, Rock Bottom Plunge. This is an extremely fun roller coaster by manufacturer Gerslauer. Now, a quick note, I rode this twice and it seemed like the back row was much smoother than the front. In the front, I recall some headbanging and general roughness, but the back row was almost glossy smooth. So if you don't opt to get the all day pass, definitely consider the back row for your single excursion on rock bottom plunge. Overall, I would highly recommend this coaster for anyone seeking thrills. Next up is Fairly Odd Coaster, another Gerslauer roller coaster, but this one is a family spinning coaster. It spins according to gravity, not a predetermined program, so every ride will be different. I personally love these rides. They are always fun and even supply two or three moments of great airtime as well. Here's a tip. If you want some crazy spinning patterns, be sure to sit with a group of three instead of four. That way your vehicle will be unbalanced and when you move around those turns, your vehicle will rotate rapidly. Pepsi Orange Streak is a really neat roller coaster that spans throughout the entirety of Nickelodeon Universe. So in that respect, it's unique because you're not going to see a ton of parks that offer a roller coaster that touches every corner of the park. And I love the way this winds through so many attractions, including the log flume. The coaster doesn't have a huge thrill factor, but I still found it really fun. Next up is something I personally don't ride because it just looks too nauseating for me, but it's called Avatar Airbender, which is an Intamin surf rider. This actually has quite a long ride cycle and looks really thrilling. My friend wrote it and he said he had a great time, but if you don't do well with nonstop airtime moments like me, I wouldn't recommend it. There were also a handful of closed rides that you should be aware of when I went in early July 2021. These included the Log Flume, Mutant Masher, the Ferris Wheel. I'm not sure if this was due to staffing or some other reason, but it was kind of a shame they didn't open at all throughout the day. The good news is their closed status actually was displayed on the website, so if you're going for one or more of these particular rides, be sure to check the website before you go. Now the question you're all wondering, which type of tickets do you buy? Individual points or the all-day wristband? Well, ultimately, of course, this depends on which rides you want to go on, but here's the thing. How many points each ride is worth is not found at the ticket kiosk. So when you're standing there wanting to buy tickets, you have to walk around or peruse the website. Even on the website, there is no comprehensive list of rides and their point values, which is a bit frustrating. You have to go to the individual ride to maybe look for a sign or ask an operator or look on the website under the individual attraction name. But don't worry, here at Theme Park Travel Tips, we have you covered. Every medium to major thrill ride is six points. This includes rides like Brain Surge and Shell Shock, and even Fairly Odd Coaster and Rock Bottom Plunge. To purchase six points alone, or one thrill ride, will cost you $7.60. 30 points will cost you $29.99. This is likely the most popular because it lets you on five different thrill rides, which for most people is just enough diversity. Any of the minor rides that are not thrill rides, like kitty rides, kitty coasters, those are all worth three points each, so half of a thrill ride. 
The best bulk option is of course the highest, which is 84 points for $74, making it just 88 cents per point, or $5.29 per thrill ride. This option is likely for large groups or families who don't want to commit everyone to an all-day ride pass, but instead want to be able to ride a few rides all together. 84 points can get you 14 thrill rides total. And then of course there's the all-day option where there's two possible prices depending on the peak pricing schedule. These options are either $39.99 or $44.99. By the way, each of these have risen $5 since I was there just a few weeks ago. It's a little ambiguous what exactly constitutes a peak pricing day, but my first guess is prime summer days and most weekends. Fortunately, they do have their peak days on a calendar online so you can look this up before you go and you may be able to save $5. If you're there to ride a few rides, my ultimate recommendation is to get the all-day wristband, and here's why. Stay with me on this one. Because of this park, I have a new favorite flat ride and it's called Shell Shock, which is a Gearslauer Skyfly. And oh my gosh, is this thing fun. And above all, it's very rewritable. Every ride is going to be a bit different depending on how you spin it and how much you want to spin in general. I also love how the profile is not out of control fast. It's graceful. Not just that, but the operator console is a freaking pizza stand. Incredible theming by Nickelodeon Universe and Gerslauer on that one. You don't get any kind of airtime at the top, which I personally love. Really repetitive airtime kind of makes me sick, but that's a story for another day. Here it's very smooth and I can't really see anyone getting sick on this unless they purposely flip themselves into oblivion. I'm going to do an entire video on how to flip upside down on this thing, so be sure to subscribe and look out for that one. It took me three rides to flip, so don't give up. It is extremely difficult and I think they tightened up this particular model so kids aren't flipping out of control. Believe me when I say it is a full body workout. Overall, I absolutely love this ride and I think more parks in the US need the Gearslauer Skyfly. I also loved Brain Surge. This was less intense than I expected because you control the flip. You can flip either forward or backwards with a little control stick in the center, or even not flip at all if you like. This is also very rewritable because you can stop yourself in certain positions and just kind of hang out while you go around the course. But wait, here's your first pro tip. You and your family can go and meet the Nickelodeon characters for free. That's right, you don't have to purchase any points, you don't have to ride any rides, just go and meet them for free. Enjoy and have a blast. Now, regarding some of the lesser known attractions, there are two that I would call hidden attractions because they are difficult to find unless you're looking for them. The first is Ghost Blasters in the corner over by Rock Bottom Plunge. And the other is a balloon round ride called Guppy Bubbler. I would have had no idea this was here if I didn't randomly walk down this path. This one is really hidden. Something else that's unique is the backyard against Swing Along. Super cute name and theming and several of their seats are facing backwards. This is due to me. If this is some new trend for swings to be backwards, definitely let me know in the comments. If this video was useful to you so far, go ahead and hit that like button because that's what helps this video get pushed out to the masses. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it and let's move on. Of course, everyone wants to make sure their keys, wallets, and phones are safe during their ride, which is why I'm pleased to inform you every major ride has separate cubbies for your loose articles at the station free of charge. Now, of course, Nickelodeon Universe is not responsible for lost or stolen items, but honestly, they did a better job than several major theme park chains I've seen lately. I'm not going to name any names, but Six Flags. They do a better job than Six Flags. So check it out. For Rock Bottom Plunge, they have this rotating Lazy Susan. For loose articles, and the operator syncs it with the vehicles. I thought this was really clever, very effective, and it has a very small footprint. Even for major flat rides like Shell Shock, they had cubbies that no one else from outside the ride area can access, which means for all intents and purposes, I would say they are very safe. Now, many guests may be traveling here on their way in or out of the airport since it's just a few minutes away from the airport by train. This means guests could have luggage and want a place to store it. Well, fear not because there is a set of lockers right underneath the Ferris wheel. 
What I love about this is you can access them multiple times, as many times as you want, and the most you're going to pay for a large bag is $14. You don't want to be dragging around your bag from attraction to attraction because it kind of ruins the fun and I'm not sure they can store those at the station anyway. But $14 is really not a bad deal for all day storage, especially since you have unlimited access. One more thing that is super unique to this park, if you want to just stop riding rides and go shopping, you can go do that. Some of my favorite stores nearby, I mean literally one minute, maybe two minute walk, included the four star Amazon store, where it's all four or five star Amazon products. There's also an Apple store right nearby and the Lego store is practically inside of the park. It actually was nice to be in a theme park that just had a totally different surrounding other than a giant parking lot. And here is the pro bonus tip. They have samples at the M&M store. So if you're feeling a little bit hungry, feel free to stop by there and see if they have samples on the first or the second floor. Okay, I think I have exhausted every single possible topic from a theme park in a mall. As always, comment below if you have any additional tips. Have fun, be well, and thanks for watching Theme Park Travel Tips.